My name is Caitlin. I want to talk to you about how glass can be strengthened or weakened depending on how it's heated and cooled. So one of the interesting things for you to know about glass to start with is that when you change the temperature of glass, you are also changing the size of it. Glass swells when it's heated, shrinks as it cools, and you are not gonna be able to see that with the naked eye. It's happening at the atomic level. But what you can see is that I'm heating a ring around this glass bottle, and that means part of the glass is swelling right now. And the rest of it is trying very hard to stay the same size that it was. So it's creating a little tug of war in the glass. We call that thermal stress. So if I control the amount and the placement of the stress by controlling the way that I heat the glass, I can actually control when and where the glass is gonna break. Kind of like that. So you can see <laughs> it breaks in a nice neat ring right around where I was heating it. That's because of the swelling. So it was building stress until it almost couldn't stand it anymore. And at the last minute, I touched it with a drop of water. That changed the temperature really suddenly. That's called thermal shock. And it adds enough stress that the glass can't stand it anymore, and so it breaks apart, and that releases the stress. So that's a technique that's called score and crack. And it's used in the glass making industry to create very precision cuts when they're making things like drinking glasses, wine goblets, the tubes that are used for fluorescent lighting. I told you you can't see thermal stress with the naked eye, but you can see it in what's called a polariscope. So this is made of two polarizing filters. There's a light in the back and it shines through the filters and through the glass and that's a combination that allows us to see where there is stress in glass. Nothing very interesting to see in there yet because when this bottle was manufactured, it was put through a very controlled cooling process that's called the annealing cycle. So annealing, that's a word you hear a lot in the glass museum. The key to annealing is that when you are shaping glass, it's very hot, right? It has to be hot to be soft. So you shape your glass and then you've got to get it down to room temperature. If you cool it too quickly, in other words, if you just leave it sitting in the air to cool, there are different parts of that glass. There's the inside, the outside, the thick parts, the thin parts, they're all holding different amounts of heat. And so when the glass cools very fast, they shrink at different rates and they tug against each other and it creates stress. And we just saw that too much thermal stress breaks the glass. So if you wanna avoid breaking your glass after you shape it, you have to slow down the cooling process. So you do that by putting it into a hot oven. It's called an annealing oven. So you put the glass in there, you even out the temperature and then you start turning that temperature down very slowly, which allows the glass to all shrink at the same rate. And so it gets down to room temperature without stress in it, that's gonna stabilize the glass. So annealed glass, that's what we have here, that's gonna be true of all the glass that we interact with. It always gets annealed, does not have stress in it. We'd sort of like to see what that stress looks like though, right? We've got it in a polariscope. Let's go ahead and stress this glass again and you will start to see that little black and white pattern showing up there. That's a small spot of temporary stress. Normally it just fades as it cools, but that had a little crack in it already, and so that is releasing the stress by breaking the glass again. So the stress that we're talking about is made of two parts. They're called compression and tension. I can illustrate those for you with this foam block. So if I squeeze the foam, I'm creating some compression. But you can see that no matter how hard I squeeze it, that's not likely to break the foam because compression is making it stronger. But tension, tension is a pulling stress. If I pull hard on this, it tears apart easily. So tension makes this foam weaker and compression makes it stronger. And the same thing is true with glass. But in a piece of glass, if there are stresses, they get paired up. And so if there's an area of compression, that's going to force another area into tension. So depending on how those stresses get arranged in a particular piece of glass, they can make it more likely to break like the bottle did. But then there are some cases where they use those exact same stresses on purpose 
and they make glass that's less likely to break. So we're gonna see an example of that in just a minute too. Plastic also swells when it's heated and shrinks as it cools. I bet some of you might have broken a CD case before. I'm gonna show you why. There's a whole bunch of uneven stress trapped in there because plastic is manufactured in a way that's similar to glass. So it gets heated up, it gets shaped in a mold and then cooled. The thin parts cool faster than the thick parts. Everything shrinking and tugging and creating stress. And this particular product doesn't go through an annealing cycle and so the stress ends up locked in there once it's down to room temperature. That's what's making that plastic so brittle. And you might wonder, well, why are we looking at plastic? I thought this was the glass breaking demo, which it is, but if you had a piece of glass, that same shape and it had that same kind of stress in it, ooh, it would be so unstable. That wouldn't be very safe to handle, but we wanted you to see what a lot of stress looks like. And so we look at it in a nice safe piece of plastic and then I can compare that to our glass samples. Standard window glass. This is just like we all have at home. It is annealed, and so no stress to be seen in there. Laminated glass. This one's got two layers of annealed glass. There's a very thin layer of plastic in between there that's holding them together. No stress here either. The important difference between this one and the first one is the layering, and so this is also called safety glass. Thermally tempered glass. This one's five times stronger than annealed glass, and it's loaded with stress. So here's our example of glass where the stress is making it stronger. And that's because that stress was put in there on purpose. You see how it has kind of an organized pattern to it, and it's a black and white pattern like we saw in the bottle. Looks a little bit different than what we're seeing in the plastic. It's the same two stresses, they're just organized differently. So in the plastic, we've got this uneven stress and the light passes through, breaks up into different color wavelengths and so we're seeing all that color. That uneven stress is making the plastic brittle. In the glass, those same two stresses are put in there in a very organized way and it's making the glass stronger. So the way that they make tempered glass is to start with annealed glass. So imagine a bigger sheet of annealed glass, no stress in it. They cut out the shape and size that they want, and then they heat it again. And just before it's gonna melt, they blast it with jets of cold air on both sides. So the surface is gonna cool and shrink very fast and evenly, and it's gonna create compression on the surfaces. That's the strong stress, which then forces the fragile tension stress to the inside, so it ends up being protected by the strong compression on the outside. It's the arrangement of those stresses that's making that glass very impact resistant. The last piece is called a Bologna vial. That's named after Bologna, Italy. It's where this type of idea was first understood, and that is basically a bubble of glass. So open on one end, very thick on the other end, and they make the bubbles for us here over at the hot glass show, and then they just cool them in the air. Isn't that exactly what I told you we don't do? So if you do that, you end up with a lot of uneven stress trapped in there because that glass is not annealed at all. And you're gonna see that except for this demonstration, you would have no use for a piece of glass that's not annealed because basically that piece of glass is not finished. All right, so I've got everything locked in and we are gonna break some glass. And in order to do that, I'm gonna need 